Well, guys, another episode of American Hot Rod Mechanic working on European stuff. So in a previous video, you saw me do the alternator change, which wasn't too horribly bad. Learned a lot. You know, I'm always learning something. If you're not learning something every day, you're dying. So my, uh, my philosophy on all that is uh, they're all cars. They're all mechanical, even though... They do things differently and different manufacturers. It's just another car. So I always thought these Mini Coopers are kind of cool. Not a real manly car. And I'm not really a convertible guy. Kind of like the hard tops better, but it is what it is. And I got this and we're working on it. Going to make it nicer and fix it up and, and make it a decent vehicle. So I didn't want to do anything to this car until I knew a few things that weren't working were going to be fixed because the alternator got replaced. And that happened. Fully charged battery put in here with the alternator belt completely off. The alternator was completely seized up. The top didn't work. That's expensive, and that kind of defeats the purpose of having a convertible if the top don't go down and the power steering didn't work. Expensive fix. Even finding a used pump, and it's quite a chore. So, you know, some of these newer vehicles don't run anything off the battery. The battery is just a reserve, but you got to have the alternator up and running. Things to work. Lo and behold, power steering began to work. When the new alternator went in, and the top works flawlessly. Worth spending a little time and money on some of the other little small things that need to be repaired. So then the next thing is uh, when you go to put the roof down, it automatically rolls the windows down. And the back windows roll down and sound really crunchy, <laughs> which isn't a good thing. And they won't go back up. little YouTube research. <clears throat> Come to find out the regulators are cable driven um, through a, a window motor. And there is a holder that holds the cables in place that is known to break on these. They snap, snap. You have to take the whole window and the regulator out, to replace or fix that part, which means the whole rear end of the vehicle's interior has to come out. Seats got to come out, rear panels got to come out, then the window and regulator can come out and repair it and reverse, put it all back together. Fun part is both sides are bad. I know I tested these when I first got it and I noticed. The crunchiness on the passenger side, but the driver's side worked fine. Well, this time when the top went down, both sounded horrible, and neither one are going back up. Haven't taken it apart yet. That's what we're doing today. I already ordered the parts. I thought, well, I better tear this apart, make sure that's what's wrong. Hopefully, there's nothing else going on because I ordered the full rebuild kit, which is new cables and uh, all these other pieces, which will replace that broken piece that you can just replace that but uh we get that buttoned up and while i got the interior out i'll probably do a little cleaning i'm gonna be doing a full detail on this car tearing these windows out for the parts to come in as long as we keep our budget cheap and do it ourselves again that's what my channel is all about do stuff yourself find a way to get the parts less expensive than bmw less expensive than aftermarket classic hot rod places less expensive, whatever, but find a good quality for the money part, learn, educate yourself to, uh, to do the work yourself. Holy crap. Um, guys down the street from me, I was talking to them the other day, they're charging $125 an hour and they're the cheapest ones in town. These other guys are $155 an hour. If you got that kind of money, spend it. I like making stuff and doing stuff myself. That way, when you're running and driving it, you got that sense of pride. It makes it that much more fun to own it. All right, guys. Don't forget to subscribe. Hit that button down below, the notification bell. Like this video. If you want to see more like this. And then we'll be back on to muscle cars. Thanks for stopping by. Let's get after it. All right, guys. Let me just show you what we're dealing with here. If you can hear it or not. Driver's side window. That one's stuck there. It won't go up or down anymore with the button. That one's all the way down, but it won't go back up. Coopers, convertibles have an all up, all down button right here. And uh, the back windows go up first and then the front windows. So if I hit this, you can kind of hear it. Very crunchy. Nothing's moving. Back seat's got to come out. Back rest got to come out. Make this wide open, mainly because they pinched the panels in. You can see they go below the seat and they go behind that seat. So to get that panel out. Then this is first out, panel off, and then there's a, a window scrubber on this side that's got to come up and out, and then three bolts that hold 
this whole unit in, two on the top, one on the bottom, and I'll show you all that stuff. And we can slide this all out. I'll do that side first so it's easier for you to see. Get her apart and see what we're working with. At least that way I know the kit I got coming has got all the parts I need. Oh, and to get these back seats out in between with a seat split down at the bottom, there's a 10 millimeter bolt down there that you got to take out that allows you to move this. There's a latching system in there. That bolt comes out less, allows the latching system to actually work. So first things first, I'm going to get these folded forward. I get the bottom of the seat out and then get these folded forward so I can take them out. Three videos later where somebody actually shows you what you're supposed to do. It's on the right track. Just kind of been looking in the wrong spot. That screw we take out keeps the lever from moving. Which is what I thought, but I didn't realize what the lever was and that it's actually from the front. That simple. I'll show you that in a minute. So then this end can pop up like that. And on this side over here, and I'll show you on this side, it'd be easy for you to see. There's a peg that goes into a, a keyed slot. And by keyed, it's like a T. So you gotta rotate this until you find that T where it fits, come out. Everybody said that's the biggest pain in the butt because you don't know, you can't see what the angle is. I get what they're saying. I was trying to be smarter than the average bear and see how they were. Like if it was, hey, it's perfectly flat, just leave it, lift it to here. And it comes out. Of course, if you strip a slot in the panel, It's keyed, a T. That's only got two little things that you got to line those up with so it gets out. Like that. Without it, it's coming out. And it looks like this actually pulled out. This is, being at that angle, it's out. It just ain't releasing. The metal in the, the metal is keyed. Not just the little plastic deal. Technically right there should be open. thing so I was talking about this guy the top see how that rolls back that bolt 
that we took out goes here, keeps it from moving. Take the bolt out the top with a screwdriver. And then both those seats slide in there and come out. This locks them in. So the guy was showing it down below. I knew where it was. It wasn't showing it at all, the other guy. He just put his hand down and goes, there's a lever, and you pull it. Well, he didn't show it. Now you know. Next is these push pins. Push pin. Phillips in there. Now, his was a Phillips. He said it might be a Torx. That's a Phillips. One, pop that off. Little push pin, hold it in. That. I don't understand it. Might have to do it. I'm gonna explain my point of view. The guy removed the seat belt down here, which really don't need it. It's not holding this in, so that was pointless. And remove the seat belt down here because you got to thread it through here. But I should be able to flip this over upside down and just lean it against the seat and it's out of my way. I hate big 50 Torx bits because a lot of times with corrosion, they're too tight. And no matter how good a bit you are, you go through two or three of them trying to get this crap out. So first and foremost, we'll see if we can flip it upside down and set it in the well, which will give us access to our window track stuff. Oh, it's fun taking apart old interior pieces because uh, you hear all that popping and you hope they ain't, it doesn't mean it's breaking. I'll be able to just do this. Feed that through to this side. Don't forget to move it back. See? I learn something new every day. Don't always have to listen to what everybody else says. All right, so now it's going to be this 10 mil, this 10 mil. In this 10 mil to get this window scrubber out. That should wiggle up and out. That's holding your glass in and, and is your scrubber. All right, so got that out. Next trick is. That 10 mil right there. That 10 mil right there. We just loosen them. You can see they're in a slot. We just loosen them enough so we can get it up. And there's one more just like it at the bottom in the middle. That hole there that's got the plug in it. We'll pull the plug out. There's a nine mil, 10 mil behind there. We loosen that one. Pull that plug, loosen that. We should be home free on wiggling it out. I got a feeling I'm gonna have to try to raise this by hand and using the window button up there because there's a leg, that bolt down there is holding onto a leg of this. When I watched the guy, he cut the film and came back and really didn't say much about it, but uh, it looked like he raised the window so he could manipulate that leg better. There's our bolt plug. I did not say butt plug. Get your minds out of the gutter. And he said, hardest part is, is getting that, oh huh? yeah. Finding that bolt down there. Well, I can see it if I go through here. Oh, I'm tightening. I'm not gonna use the power at all. I'm just gonna get that loose enough. That's loose enough. Ratchet wrench, your friend this. Can't get a socket. Well, probably get socket in that one. This one, there's no socket in there. Probably pretty good. Oh, I see my plastic piece that normally breaks on these. Yeah, I see it down there. And I see the other half up here. <laughs> Okie dokie, that would do it. 
safety features. I think the cable's bound up, so it's not allowing it to move. Well, that should be interesting. I used to have plastic pry tools, so don't do what I do. I use a screwdriver. I gotta pry this other front trim piece up out of the way will help. There's some room. I wanna try to do this as gently as possible. It's tight. It is metal and you don't want to kink it. Now give me a little more room. Post. There we go. And a wire management clip. that a little easier. Oh yeah, I can feel that bottom leg already. Yeah, our broken clip. Post. Right here is where your problem is. That's why the window needs to be up. That post on the bottom one, not clearing, and this glass is in the way. Technically, this glass should come up. Nothing holding it from coming up. That plastic piece bound up with a cable in it. Oh, that cable is tight. Cable holder is bound where when I pull on the glass, it can't come up. Take the motor off. A way to release the pressure on that cable, I guess. pressure on that it's just pressed into a plastic gear there we go and that, that plastic gear uh this was wrapped around the motor and not the it's supposed to be wrapped around that pulley there so Yep, that broke. Boy, this thing didn't remember. All that crunching was something else. I mean, this is supposed to be spun around there and comes out here. It's already pressured itself around to a side it's not even supposed to be on. And broke. Down there. What I'm going to try to do is, well, breaking it. Got new ones of these coming as part of the rebuild kit. I'll bust it anyways, right? Cable cutter. See, this is tight, and that's what's holding the window down because it can't lift. If I lift, this one has to go that way, and it can't go nowhere. We'll just put that on that cable and go. There we go. Beavers. All that just to there. Window up. Now I can lean it this way, see? And then that snakes by. This that that plug right there was catching down there. The only reason we had to get the window up. The whole rebuild kit with the new springs, the new pulleys, all new cables, the whole bit was 19 bucks. So got one for each side. I thought, well, it's not what I need, I'll send it back. But 20 bucks a window to fix them. No brainer. All right, you don't need to see me do the other one. Not horrible. Learning, you know, I'm no expert at it. You know, I can't reiterate this enough, and I'm sorry if I'm a, a, if I repeat myself a lot. I'm not a, a certified mechanic. I've just been wrenching since I can remember. Whether it was disassembling my whole bicycle when I was eight years old and nine years old, uh, taking apart things that were broken to see what it looked like on the inside, putting them, figuring out how to put it back together, hopefully, you know, making them work when I was 10 to my teens. Um, first car, doing my own maintenance and services, helping my dad work on his car, 
when I was a kid and learning, looking at it, going, oh, that's what it looks like under there, you know? Just, I've always been curious and learning. I'm not certified. I didn't go to school for this. I'm not a mechanic. I never have been. Brief, briefly, when I was 21, I worked at my buddy's shop because he's seen the cars that I've worked on of my own and built. And I worked at his shop for like six months, changing parts and ended up doing his books because I was better at doing his books than he was and he was better at doing the stuff than I was because he'd done it forever. I'm slow. I mean, I'm not, I'm not trying to hide that. I take my time and figure stuff out and I get frustrated and I, I mumble cuss words and do stuff and I try to get those out. I always use the camera being on and I'm getting better at just narrating what I'm doing. But I watched the video. It made sense. But you still got to put your hands on it. And uh, that fought me a little bit, a little bit more than the video scenes, but that's, that's life. You know, the videos, people show you the, the easiest, best parts. But I got the gist of it. And my whole point of this rant and rave is rant number one for this video, or number two, maybe, I don't know. Uh, figure it out yourself. If you have confidence that I know nothing, but I do know that myself can problem solve. And if I see and look and feel and touch, I can I understand how it works? And then maybe I can take it apart and I can put it back. Together. And there's satisfaction in fixing your own shit. And there's satisfaction in driving something you did the work on. Do it as safely and properly as you can. Do your research. We're in the wonderful world of YouTube and the internet. Do not become an internet mechanic where you watch one guy say, this is how you make this go 200 miles an hour. And you're looking at it and you just go ahead and copy what he does. And everybody else in the world's looking at it going, that's the most unsafe thing you could possibly do. There's bubblegum welds, what he welded here and what he did here. He's got, you know, twist ties and, and, and duct tape holding wiring together, whatever it is. Watch enough videos, find the commonality. Guys will show there's a hundred videos for the same thing you want to learn how to do. Watch 10, 15, 20 of them. And you watch 10 of them and seven guys all say the exact same thing and these other three guys are different um those three guys are probably the ones that are wrong or doing it the hard way that's not an internet mechanic if you do your research and then work on your stuff to do it safe and proper so that's all i'm saying let me be one of them go ahead and look at what i do watch nine other guys Maybe I'm one of the three and those other guys are smarter than me and they know something. Great, but at least you did the research. That's all we care about. I don't know, that took me maybe an hour. Might, might not even have been an hour. So, back at it. We know what we got. I was hoping I only had to replace the, the little center mechanism because if everything still looked perfect, I was just going to put the new one that came in that. But I'll put the whole cabling system and the, and the spools and uh, we'll show you that when it comes. I don't know how long you're going to be able to see this, but... Well, my finger is, there's a slit this cable's supposed to go in. And this cable somehow slipped over the slip and got between the motor and that. And that's why this one was locked up, because this piece, like I said, was working before this side and just decided not to lately. But this piece is still in one piece. But I still, because this was all bound up, I probably could have saved it by taking that off. But if that slipped its case it's probably because something in here is bad um hopefully it's not a motor i'll test them but i'll save that for later in case something else breaks but might have been able to fix this one by just taking that off rewrapping and putting it back together but who knows what we'll find in there i'll let you know when i find when i find it okay pull that off to release it now You know how this is cables in here right this is supposed to wrap around see how it comes down there's a slot and wrap around this yellow pool not be on the outside when i took this apart you can see the wear somehow this had got bound up and popped out and was wrapped around here it has to be that See the cable in there? That's how it's supposed to be wrapped from both sides. Come in. And by this turning this way, it pulls the cable one way to pull up the window. And by turning the other way, it pulls the cable pull down the window. 
somehow this skipped out and out of its thing. I'm seeing a bunch of plastic. This is plastic. It could be. It feels rubbery. Let's see if I have if I can find those. This might be shot. New ones would probably really help when they get here. I'll check. That was our problem. And see, it was doing this. I'm doing right now, going around the outside like that. Yeah, ain't supposed to do that. See if I can pry that out. And uh, it's gotta come out anyways because I got new ones. Let's see what's going on. The next day. All right. Got the new pieces in. Placement for that. Um. in it. Here's just a PV blaster chain and cable lube. But it's silicone or Teflon. So switch some of that in there so the slides better. This and this goes on the top of the pulley. The bottom one here comes from this way, goes through here. There's a track inside here, and it'll go in here on the bottom. They said this is a left and right kit. All the other ones are left or right, but this comes in two. One's for left, one's for right. This goes on the top, see here, it would come in through this slit. This is beyond the top, so boom, connects in there. That means the one will come in through the bottom, connect there. This one won't work that way, it's the exact opposite. The one on top comes in from the left. See that difference? That's the passenger side, that's the driver's side. Very nice down in there and then pull it, it turns, catches, good, that one, and they show people winding these up, like wind, 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 but I think that'll bind up the cable, might have to do it that way, thinking to myself, self, that's why self, I'll do it individually, I just thought I could put it in there and then turn it and it would take up the slack, that way you're not, uh, Twisting these because you're kind of twisting them when you're doing this. How cable is. There's grooves on this pulley. Heel. Scratch it over. Okay. Oh, okay. There. Well, that isn't as easy as it looks. <laughs> A few moments later. This is the part when the window's down, there's no way to maneuver it around. This is the part that hits inside, so see it hits. If you angle it, you just clear it. 
And now the window could be down if I wanted. All right, guys, I can admit when I'm wrong. I said this was the right one. Because the top coming out go this way. That's what you think. But it wasn't lining up right. Well, it all landed up right. Somebody put it all together. Went back and looked at the video. The guy's working on the passenger side one, and he has this lighter colored pulley. See how this one's a little different color? Hair more yellow. I'm watching him. When he puts it in, the nubs of the cable are on this side. And then they go up and out. I came out like, all right, well, maybe I'm doing something wrong. Thinking that it lands in there like that. I guess it doesn't matter because this thing spins, right? I'm looking close at it. I don't know if you can pick that up on the video or not. Or not. Right here, there's an R. <laughs> Flashback. They said this is a left and right kit. All the other ones are left or right, but this comes with two. One's for left, one's for right. Barely see it. On this one right here, there's an L. L would be driver side. That would be passenger side, so I had the wrong one in there. But more than likely, when this thing was trying to power up, it was fighting against itself. So, that's all I can think of. Let's try this again. Put the motor in first, numb nuts. In. Lubed them up with a little more grease instead of the Teflon just to see if work it a couple of times. Yeah, it's getting better now. And we'll call that a win. All right, guys, got it all back together. Back together. I didn't videotape it because it's just the reverse of what you saw me do earlier, except for without all the cussing and swearing because it went back together super easy. Um, cleaned up on the seats a bit. Put some leather conditioner on them, feel better, and uh, clean these. I got a leather condition them today. Cleaned up, wiped down. Had a lot of filth in the nooks and crannies. I know the video ain't gonna do it very good, but cleaned up the chrome and got in there and got them clean. And door panels cleaned up nice. I need the vacuum carpet shampooing. And all this cleaned up real good. All the fingerprints and all the marring and all the crud. And not a bad little rig. Not a bad little rig. That's where we're at. Well, there you go, guys. Hot rod working on European stuff. <laughs> a little out of my element, but the whole point of the video is, you know, don't be afraid to try something new. You have an opportunity to, to work on something different than your, it's a little out of your comfort zone, do it. That's how you learn. That's how you grow. Um, we're just doing that one on the cheap. Like I said, I got it on the cheap. Always thought they were kind of neat little car. Don't know if I'm keeping it. Uh, like I said, might register it for my mom to drive for a little while. Probably going to drive it a little bit before I give it to her to make sure it's safe. But only thing left to do is, and I don't know if I'll do a video on it or not. I don't know if anybody's interested. Let me know in the comments. But uh, I'm going to cut and buff that and uh, polish out some stuff. And just all the little fine details to, to make it a little bit nicer. And that way, if uh, mom drives it, it's a little nicer car for her. And if not, uh, it's, it's going to be a nice rig to, to send down the road for the next person. So thanks for stopping by. Don't forget to comment, subscribe, like. And uh, we'll be getting back on hot rods after this. So don't forget, guys. Don't wait for your hot rod to be perfect to enjoy it. Always do a little something. Get out, drive it around, have fun. Enjoy it. Figure out what you're going to do next. Put her in the shop. Do that next step. Get her out and enjoy it. Thanks for stopping by, guys. Have a great one. God bless.